Naruto is mostly known for his bizarre appearance, as well as being in the main. Alright, bro. Hold on, bro. We we not gonna skirt past this. Now, the other day, actually yesterday, we were talking about when Kane unmasked, and he had that horrible, horrible hairline that started back by his earlobe. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we found someone worse. My man's hairline starts behind his ear. What is this cut? What is this? Bizarre appearance. Like, what is that? What is this? You were doomed to fail with hair like this. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out supernatural WWE wrestlers that instantly failed. Now, I originally wanted to check this out right around uh, Halloween time, but I wasn't able to, didn't have enough time to do that. But I still wanted to check out the video because, um, hey, look, we've seen it a few times in WWE where, you know, they will try to recreate uh, a spooky supernatural character to kind of, you know, give like the vibes of the Undertaker or whatnot and, and try to, you know, recreate that, that spookiness of a character. And it fails miserably, actually. Like it, it, it doesn't work at all. And I think it just comes to the product of the time. The Undertaker worked back then because you know a lot of people believe that wrestling for the most part was real so you know it worked to scare people and, and have people believe in someone being supernatural and i'm not talking about the lightning and stuff like that i'm talking about just the character's aspect but now as you get older and as social media has been a, a very prevalent thing in the world you can kind of see through it and at least you want it to be entertaining if you're going to add supernatural spooky elements. But a lot of times this shit don't be entertaining. So we're going to check out some of those instances where they tried and failed miserably. Appreciate all love sport. Let's get right into it, man. That instantly bombed. Number 10, Damien Demento. So, for supernatural characters to work in pro wrestling, they must be compelling and they must be able to be taken somewhat seriously. Unfortunately for Damien Demento, he never managed to get the crowd Ooh. on his side, and his character and legacy suffered as a result. Demento is mostly known for his bizarre appearance, as well as being in the main- Alright bro. Hold on bro. We- We not gonna skirt past this. Now the other day, actually yesterday, we were talking about when Kane unmasked and he had that horrible, horrible hairline that started back by his earlobe. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we found someone worse. My man's hairline starts behind his ear. What is this cut? What is this? Bizarre appearance. Like, what is that? What is this? You were doomed to fail with hair like this. What? <laughs> as well as being in the main event of the inaugural Raw against The Undertaker. This match showed why the supernatural elements of his persona failed to work as he paled in comparison to the dead man. His gimmick was supposed to be that he was mentally disturbed and he was from the outer reaches of the mind. These oh, traits were never fully right. developed and were a key reason as to why the gimmick- Gotta be mentally disturbed with a hairline like that, bro. That's just crazy. Gimmick flopped almost immediately. Number nine, Midian. I think the I majority of characters person. in the Undertaker's yeah. Ministry of Darkness faction had supernatural elements attached to them. One of the members of the group was Midian, who was previously portrayed as one half of the Godwins, that being a pig farmer. Midian's new character would be vastly different to his prior persona as he would basically be a brainwashed soothsayer who did the dead man's bidding during his rivalries. The gimmick itself had very little to offer as it suffered from a lack of depth. Midian's role in the popular faction was mainly to take losses left, right and center Sound and it would be right. painfully awkward when Midian would come to the ring to no reaction. Oh, Midian was one man. of the Undertaker's closest friends in real life and this was likely where Midian's involvement came from. The character could have been a success, that is if WWE put a little more effort into fleshing the character out. Number sure. 8, Viscera. Another yeah. name that was handpicked to be part of the Ministry of Darkness Remember was Mabel, who would now be known as Viscera. Viscera was mostly known by fans for his King of the Ring win and his- I will always say, Viscera was most- These guys right here, they are the real American heroes because they were carrying him 
on their shoulders. Shoulders made out of goddamn vibranium. They the real American heroes. Right here, I always will say that. Whoever carried Babel to the ring, y'all are the real American heroes. Mostly known by fans for his King of the Ring win and his diabolical SummerSlam match against Diesel for the WWE title. The idea behind this particular character was that Viscera would be under The Undertaker's spell and he would debut a new gothic style look that was supposed to represent this new persona. Similarly to Midian, the gimmick didn't do any favors for him, as although he was sharing screen time with The Undertaker, oh fans just had no interest in his character. It also didn't help that he showed little to no signs of improvement in the ring, so yeah. whenever he wrestled, fans instantly knew it was going to be an instant bathroom break. When the Ministry storyline came to an end, Viscera kept the gothic style elements of his presentation and it was even implied in the summer of 99 that he was still somewhat associated with The Undertaker. However, the gimmick had a shelf life and it was mm. eventually released from the company in the year 2000. Number 7. Black Rain The Black Rain character debuted on TNA TV in 2007 what? and it resulted in one of the most infamous character runs in TNA history. Dustin Rhodes would wear a black and silver bodysuit and the idea in kayfabe was that this was the darker side of Rhodes' real life personality. Rhodes would have an infatuation with rats and that was pretty much the only identifiable- I didn't know this. I'm, I'm today years old. I did not know this. Once again, I didn't really watch TNA, so I didn't know this was a, a character gimmick that he had. I did not know this. So if you're well versed in this version of, of Dustin, y'all let me know. Well, did y'all enjoy it or not? Because I did not know this was the thing. Well, trait the character had. It was horrendously executed, and it's not something that Rhodes fondly remembers, especially as he was at a personal low in his life when the character was being delivered. Number 6, the Yeti. That. WCW had a rotten reputation when it came to supernatural characters, as they could never truly master them. A great example of this is the infamous Yeti character. <laughs> I, think I, I think I've seen clips about this abomination. <laughs> as it made WCW a complete laughing stock, and the clip of the Yeti's debut is still often used to mock the creative output of the promotion. In 1995, Ron Reese would be picked to portray the character, and the Yeti was in essence a mummy. The character would debut in a bizarre gimmick where he performed a double bear hug alongside the giant on Hulk Hogan. Bro, what is that? Someone really pitched this in a fucking meeting to put on live television. It's fucking hilarious. The gimmick just looked bad. It looked cheap, and it wasn't a character that was ever going to be taken seriously. <laughs> WCW eventually decided that the initial presentation of the character wasn't even going to work, so they would have the Yeti go from a mummy to a giant ninja. This was likely done so the character could compete in a match, yet this transition was never given a logical explanation, and it was yet another case of WCW treating super, the audience like complete Super giant ninjas just so... <laughs> idiots. Number 5. Mordecai Religion and pro wrestling can be an odd mix, and when WWE debuted the character known as Mordecai, it instantly guy. led to issues. Mordecai was introduced to the audience in a series of extremely well-delivered vignettes. These vignettes would tell the fans that Mordecai was going to rid the world of sinners, and it did lead to some interest from the audience. Yet the religious symbolism was too much for the fans to handle, which was completely understandable. When the character finally surfaced on TV, he was instantly compared to The Undertaker, as he was in essence, the anti-Undertaker. Anti he was dressed in all white, yeah. and on paper, Mordecai vs The Undertaker should have been a huge match, and it was a match that WWE were legitimately considering. The fundamental flaw with the character was without a question, the in-ring work. Mordecai was below average in the ring, and this was 2004 WWE, where in-ring work actually mattered. I mean, the presentation and stuff looked good, you know what I'm saying? I definitely could have seen that being light versus darkness. They, they really could have played into it, but you gotta, you know, gotta have the, the in-ring ability to somewhat carry the presentation too. If Mordecai was going to work with Taker, and if Mordecai was going to have a successful career, then he really needed to improve in the ring. Ultimately, WWE dropped the character within a matter of months, which was somewhat of a shame, yet there was no denying that the character was failing to connect with the WWE's core audience. Number 4. Kevin Thorne now, Speaking of the man who portrayed the Mordecai persona, Kevin Fertig would eventually be used for the relaunch of ECW, and yeah. WWE's bold idea was for him to portray a vampire character. Yeah. The original idea was that Fertig, who is now using the name Kevin Thorne, would debut alongside Gangrel, yet this idea was scrapped. Gangrel would have been an awesome fit for the ECW brand in 2006 mm -hmm. as he was an established legacy character and someone that the fans actively wanted to see make a comeback. Mm -hmm. Thorne would have a female valet by his side known as Ariel, 
And whilst her presentation, particularly his entrance, was strong, yet again, his in-ring work was completely lackluster. There you go. The fans just didn't care about him, and fans often laughed at how WWE called a vampire Kevin, which is possibly the least intimidating name imagined. Kevin. <laughs> oh no, it's the vampire. Kevin. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Despite numerous pushes, the character flopped, and it was a sign that WWE had truly mastered the vampire gimmick when it came to Gangrel years prior. Mm -hmm. Number 3. The Zombie ECW was never the flashiest product in the world, yet the majority of their content had meaning, and awesome. most of their characters had a sense of grit and realism. When it came to the launch of the WWE version of ECW, they decided to debut the one and done character of the Zombie. The Zombie character would only serve to be attacked by the Sandman, and the character was clearly a sign that the WWE version of the ECW product wasn't going to be what the fans expected. Yeah. Number 2. 7 When Dustin Rhodes aka Goldust once again went back to WCW in 1999, WCW's grand idea was for Rhodes to portray a character known as Seven. This creepy character would be shown in vignettes looking in the windows of children at night time, and the obvious implications of this character don't need to be stated. <laughs> It's, it's not funny it's just wild that once again someone said this would be a good idea for you to do <laughs> what the fuck what is going on that's wild <laughs> according to head writer for wcw at the time vince russo the character would be scrapped after standards and practices took issue with the questionable traits of the character. Yes. Now Seven was Dustin, and that was a creation of Dusty Rhodes. He came up with Seven, I walked into WCW and they were doing the Seven character. When it came to Dusty and Dustin, I respected what they were doing before I got there. So I'm gonna go along with Seven, no problem, I'm gonna get along with this. They cut vignettes and if you remember, there were children involved in these vignettes. I remember a window and all that stuff, standards and practices pulled it. Dustin to this day thinks I put the kibosh on it. No bro, I did not put the kibosh on it. I told you a million times standards and practices put the kibosh, so now we're in no man's land. The only thing I could do at that point was Dustin went out there as a character and he cut a shoot promo. Now, thankfully for Rhodes, the character is rarely discussed when examining his legacy <laughs> and quite rightly the majority of the blame falls on WCW creative for the character mishap. And number one, the judgment day. In one paper, the idea of Edge leading a villainous faction in 2022 wow. sounds incredible. However, when WWE added bizarre supernatural elements to the group, everything just started to fall apart. Edge's more gothic and supernatural traits weren't received well, and this was the exception of the brood references, which were kept brief and sporadic. Judgment Day member Damian Priest would suddenly be able to change the lighting in the arena, and how Priest attained these supernatural powers was never disclosed to the audience. The group's existence in this form made no sense. Edge last embraced the supernatural elements of his character back in 99, and as an audience, we were supposed to believe that they had laid dormant for over two decades. <laughs> Edge was reportedly against the group going in a completely supernatural mm -hmm. direction, and Edge was spot on, as it just wasn't yep. working. Ultimately, due to injuries, WWE needed to change things, and Edge would revert back to his prior persona, and then yep. he would be replaced by Finn Balor in the faction. Thankfully, this new version of the Judgment Day would completely ditch the supernatural yeah, elements, facts. and the modern version has been a focal point of WWE programming for the past two years, garnering much success. But there you have it, folks. That's a fair one. That's a very fair one. Once they started doing the spooky supernatural shit, it, it lost people. Because I'm like, what are y'all doing? Y'all don't have to do that. Just create a faction that's led by Edge. You don't have to do the spooky, mysterious, ooh, you don't have to do all that. That's, that's doing too much. But we knew that was Vince McMahon. Oh, let's add a little spook to it. No, bro, you didn't need to do that. And they're better for not having the spooky elements. You don't need it. You know, comment down below. Let me know some other supernatural wrestling characters that just failed immediately or it didn't get over with the crowd if they weren't listening in this video. Appreciate all love support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.